Namaste. Today I am going to talk of twin flames. This is rather a Western concept. So let me simplify it. From the perspective of karma, sometimes you get in relationship with someone which is a fast past life relationship. Going with the Hindu view of marriage. A couple once married ties the knot for seven lifetimes and in every lifetime they keep on getting married. So it is an endless chain between the couple. I don't, I cannot question its reality, but many a times what happens, you meet such a suitable person or, you know, there is a lot of karmic debt in the relationship made for each other kind of a case. All these things I am going to cover in today's video. Starting with the modern concept of love. There is a concept of love at first sight. See, two people come across each other and they instantly start having feelings for each other. How does this happen? The funda principle is very simple. Mars indicates passion, Venus indicates love, Moon indicates comfort. This demarcation I have only told to make you remember it. The basic point is note the position of Mars, Venus and Moon in your Rashi and D9 chart. Mark the Rashi. If the partner or if a person is also having Mars, Venus or Moon in the same Rashis or Navamshans, these two people when they meet, they will be instantly attracted towards each other. For an example, say the person is having Mars in Aries, Rashi, Leo, Navamsha. Venus in Pisces Rashi, Capricorn Navamsha, Moon in Gemini Rashi, Aquarius Navamsha. So basically partner having Moon, Venus and Mars, any of them, in any of Aries, Pisces, Gemini, Capricorn, Aquarius and Leo in D1 or D9 will get naturally attracted towards each other. And there is a very strong probability that they will be interested in each other too. Now for the relationship to actually start, now see this is an attraction. Now this attraction turned into a relationship. This is the best relationship when you are attracted towards the partner also. And you get into relationship as well. So basically to get into the relationship, you have to understand the movement of Rashi. So let's try understanding a point. There are two type of Rashi divisions that I will be making for you. First, Tattwa based. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius is fire element. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn is earth element. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius is air element. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces are watery elements. If the couple, if both the people are having their seventh lord in the same Tattwa Rashis, it is very probable, it is confirmed that the relationship can start and it will sustain for some time. Naturally, then efforts will be needed. Secondarily is Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn are movable Rashis. This is movement of Rashi. Taurus, Aquarius, Scorpio, Leo are fixed signs. Gemini, 
Sagittarius, Pisces, Virgo are dual signs. If both the couple, both the partners are having their seventh lord in same oddity, both having it in movable rashes, both having it in fixed rashes, both having it in dual rashes. It also indicate that after attraction, this, uh, you know, this relationship, this contact, sorry, this contact between the two people can convert into a relationship and it will sustain. It will sustain for some time. What does this indicate? This indicates same type of motivation. Right? For an example, if both the partners are having their seventh lord in fiery rashes, it does indicate that both of them want to do same type of things together. Both of them having their seventh lord in earthly signs indicate that both of them have same opinions regarding decision making. The seventh lord for both of them being in airy signs indicate both of them having same intellectual interest and listening to music etc. The seventh lord for both of them being in watery rashes indicate that they have same type of mental temperament. When one is hurt, another is also hurt. Say the so the both will sit and do bitching about the third person who have hurt them. Secondarily, regarding the oddity, the movement, seventh lord for both of them being in movable signs indicate both are very active. You know, seventh lord being in the fixed sign for both indicates both are very lazy. Seventh lord being in the dual sign indicate both are very very much, you know, the one who looks at opportunity and then reacts. So this same type of temperaments joins them and makes the relationship run. And now, as I have told you, the secret for the type of relationship, as soon as you realize that this is the basic point, which is holding our relationship together, you can use it. You can keep the spark going after identifying it through astrology and then the relationship will survive, will sustain for a lifetime. Now into this, what I have seen as the reason of failure or some other aspects of the same, I should be telling you. See, the Navamsha ascendant is very important. The ascendant Rashi of Navamsha, take the degree of the ascendant and divide it into nine parts. So the Navamsha ascendant of the couple being trinal Rashis, 159 to each other. Remember Rashi we are talking about. Rashi to Rashi calculation you have to do. Navamsha Rashi of the couple being in trine to each other, 159 set, indicates a natural spark between the couple where they can seldom separate. They like each other's company and once they have got the addiction of each other's company, it is very difficult for them to stay away. Secondarily is the Navamsha Rashis of both the couple being in 147 to each other, a Kendra relationship, which also keeps the relationship going. And here the major point is support. The person needs the, needs the partner to achieve their goals, to do the things that he actually wanted to do. And because of this particular reason, their relationship sustained. Those horoscopes where the Navamsha ascendants of both the couple are neither in trines 159 nor in Kendras 14710, these relationships seldom survive. In many cases, when even they are married and they come from a very orthodox background, even in those cases, what I have seen, that relationship slowly, slowly dies after some point of time. And if the relationship is sustaining, it will only sustain for namesake is what I have seen. Other than this, let me make one point very clear. Whenever you will do matchmaking, 
it is never done this way that boy is having venus in the sixth house girl is having venus in the third house so it is a three level connection this is not the way the calculation is done you always calculate it rashi to rashi boy is having venus in aquarius girl is having venus in aries it is a 311 combination because aquarius to aries is third house aries to aquarius is 11th house this is the way everything in matchmaking is counted this you have to keep in mind now another point is you know the concept of sukha happiness now the point is see going into a relationship getting married is all okay all okay very good very good the point is your what you consider as happiness for someone a wife who can help you take decisions is the dream wife for someone a wife who only lets you do what you want to do does not disturb you is a dream wife so the concept is different for everyone of sukha of happiness how do you know you will be finding happiness with this person i am giving you a very simple technique and this happiness is what is the mixing agent between two people if this combination is there then people generally fight from their family members, go against everyone and remain in the relationship. And the happiness that you get out of it is also worthy. Happiness is something which have no substitute. And it is only known by those who are happy, to be honest with you. So the basic point is check the fourth house, check the fourth lord. If the planet in the fourth house of your horoscope or your fourth lord is having a connection with the ascendant of the partner or the fourth lord of the partner's horoscope, planet in the fourth house in your partner's horoscope is having connection with your ascendant, happiness, enjoyment, satisfaction, contentment together is guaranteed from my side. If the connection is happening in both the horoscopes, this is best. It cannot get better than this. If the connection is happening in one-sided horoscope, for an example, the fourth lord of boys horoscope is connected to the ascendant of the girl. But the girl's fourth lord is not connected to the ascendant of the boy. In this scenario, only boy gets the happiness, the girl is not getting. Here, you should ask yourself, can you make the sacrifice? If yes, then you can go ahead, otherwise not. So this is another very important principle that you should be keeping in mind. Other than this, there are a few more things that I will want to talk about. So basically, you know, there is a concept that I always teach with respect to matchmaking. That is the equality of PAP. Equation of bad karmas and good karmas. So the basic point is, you know, two people, the couple should be doing same type of sins and should be doing same types of virtue. Sins and virtue have to be the same. For the relationship to be the best match, what you call a twin flame. For this to happen, the case should be the planets. There are two things that I will talk. One partner is having a very good Saturn. Another partner is having a very bad Saturn. There is a mismatch in the sins and virtue. So basic point is I am not saying that both the partners should have an exalted Saturn. What I am saying is that if one is having an exalted Mars, another should have at least Mars in own rush. This way what will happen, the stance of the person, the stance of the people will be equal. Otherwise, you know, generally in Indian scenario, you will see wife does a lot of donation. Husband is always like, why you keep on donating so much? This kind of an approach, no, because they are not understanding. They don't 
both of them don't formally believe in the concept of donation the best marriage is when both of them believe in the concept of donation so the wife will donate something husband will be very good will be happy of that so primarily what i am saying that the planets connected to the seventh house and venus special attention to these the planets connected to the seventh house and the planets connected to venus should be replicated in another person's horoscope as well. So to say if the seventh lord of the partner is powerful, the same planet in your horoscope, you say the seventh lord is Mercury. So if the seventh lord is powerful in the horoscope of the of one partner, that seventh lord is Mercury. In another partner's horoscope also, this Mercury should be good. Now, this is not the point that if the first partner is having Mercury exalted, second partner should also have Mercury exalted. Second partner can have a debilitated Mercury, but with good points in Ashtakvaraka. Second partner can have a debilitated Mercury, but Varguttam, some beneficence have to be there. In this particular scenario, what happens, the sins, etc. are equated. So the likes, dislikes, wrongdoings, good doings, sins, virtue and all of that is equal. So the marital life is beautiful. And last but not the least, what I have found is an equivalent connection. Sometimes it is very rare. See, I should tell you. Once I was doing a consultation of a client, a normal guy from somewhere from North India and we were talking of marriage and he mentioned that his wife is from some other country. I was so amazed into it. I was just thinking that how people from two different backgrounds with no possible chances of meeting somehow meet and you know go into a relationship and that relationship also goes well. Is a good relationship, is a brilliant match. How does this happen? What is this? Against all odds kind of a scenario. You see, a poor person, which people think is, you know, like he should not get married to someone because he is not settled in life, somehow meets someone. Lives together in love, fall in love. I don't want to use the word lives together in love and as they start living with each other as they start enjoying each other's company the condition of the boy starts improving and slowly slowly they make progress and the one whom we see whom some everyone was thinking can do nothing become very successful person how does this happen or otherwise also and early you take it like Two people altogether different, deep inside, are the same. You, you see, deeper level of resonance, in-depth understanding, where the one person of, where the wife is saying something else, the meaning is something else and only husband can understand it. Husband is saying something else. Meaning is something else and only wife can understand it. How does this type of relationship happen? It is pretty simple. The planets connected to your Venus and seventh house, note them. If the same planets are connected to the Venus and seventh house of your partner also. Same planets, note all the planets. If there are four planets, note all four. If there are five planets, note all five. All the planets connected to Venus and Seventh house, seventh lord in your horoscope are also connected to the Venus and seventh house, seventh lord in your partner's horoscope. This is a match with such a deeper understanding, such a deeper understanding that nothing can break this understanding. What is needed is both the couple should be loving towards each other, making efforts for the relationship. This is only needed. A little bit of effort is needed. See, car is an automatic machine. But to drive it, a small effort is needed. 
so only that small effort is needed to make this cart of marriage go in a brilliant condition only that much is needed and if that is done the relationship will be one of the best so that's all from my side on this particular topic we will meet in the next video